Hi, my name is Tommy Sebastian. I'm a member of the senior technical staff at MIT Lincoln Laboratory, and today I'm going to talk to you about the toroidal propeller. I was working on another program developing ionic propulsion for, for fixed wing aircraft. Um, so basically able to fly without any moving parts and more importantly, to fly very, very quietly. I needed some way to compare that technology to a propeller, but propellers, as we all know, are pretty loud. There are different ways to make them quieter and we can look again to wings to see how that works. Back when people were coming up with all kinds of crazy ideas for airplanes in the early 1900s uh, and during World War II, there were a couple of designs that were basically these ring wings. So I wondered what would it look like if you took a ring wing and turned something like that into a propeller. We came up with uh, this, this initial concept of using uh, this toroidal shape, this annular wing shape, to make, hopefully, a quieter propeller. So I had an intern of mine who was just absolutely phenomenal run with the idea, where he took the concept and created a bunch of iterations using 3D printers in our technology office innovation laboratory to try out, basically, different shapes and see you know, what works, what doesn't, and then from there, figuring out what are the things that are making that's making this propeller quieter? Uh, the key thing that we thought uh, was making the propeller quieter is the fact that you're now distributing the, the the vortices that are being generated by the propeller across the whole shape of it instead of just at the tip, which then uh, makes it you know, effectively uh, dissipate faster in the atmosphere. That that tip vortex doesn't propagate as far, so you're less likely to hear it. Gaining the R&D 100 award was a, was a little surreal. We all have this sense that, you know, the things we're working on could potentially have some greater impact for our work with the toroidal propeller. You know, quieter drones has utility not just in uh, military applications, it has utility in civilian applications as well. Now that we have things flying closer to people um, and there are all these potential use cases, it's being revisited and you know our group came up with the toroidal propeller is one way to address that there are others looking at it too and it's just exciting to see um, the attention that's being brought to this particular problem by the uh, by the committee for the R&D 100 award